Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I want to focus on the inside of the all-new 2024 Chevy Trax on the 8-inch digital cluster as well as the 11-inch infotainment radio system. So in this video, we're going to cover all the different menus, pages, options that you can do on the digital cluster as well as the infotainment radio screen on the LT trim and higher. So the 8-inch cluster found in front of the driver is very similar to that one found in the all-new 2023 Chevy Colorado and GMC Canyon. But here inside of the tracks, unfortunately, you cannot program or configure the screen itself. Um, it's pretty much locked in place, fixed in place, and there's really no different clusters or menus that you can configure on this display, unfortunately. However, you can access a few different menus on the main infotainment radio screen, such as the uh, trip information and stuff like that. You will have to control and reset via the screen, very similar to that of the Colorado and Canyon. So taking a look at the digital gauge cluster itself, immediately you can see the tachometer with the digital speed readout in the center. On the left hand side, you have your fuel reading, uh, the fuel level itself, as well as the range down in the left corner. On the right hand corner, you have your engine coolant temperature, as well as your odometer. You can see this one does have 24 miles on it. In your top left, you do have your compass. We are facing northwest. You have your cruise control setting right up here. This one does have the adaptive cruise control option, which is very nice. Seat belt indicator at the very top there. You can see over here on the top right hand side, this is your follow distance indicator or the amount of seconds that you are following the current vehicle in front of you. Now, even though you can't configure the actual layout of the cluster itself, there are a few controls you can do here on the right side of the steering wheel. So we have the arrow up and down or the scroll wheel. This will allow you to select the menu that you're currently selecting. And on the left, we have a little music note. And on the right, we have our current phone that is connected to the system itself. So if we press the music note and use the little scroll wheel, this will allow us to change the audio sources for the infotainment system itself. So you can cycle between AM, FM, Sirius XM, and I believe if you have a Bluetooth device paired or a phone connected, this will also add the Bluetooth functionality that you can select as the source for your current audio. So we'll just go ahead and select FM for the heck of it. And this will change the radio screen. If we go up to our music note, we can see it is currently on FM. If we go back and change it to XM, you can see that does automatically change this as well. If you do press the little phone icon here on the right side of the steering wheel, that will bring up your connected Bluetooth or wireless Android Auto, wireless Apple CarPlay device. And that will allow you to do some functionality such as make phone calls and use the other voice command systems via the steering wheel. Uh, because one you can see is currently not connected and it prompts you immediately to connect via Bluetooth or plug it in via USB to use the voice command functionality of the infotainment system. But as far as the digital gauge cluster here in front of the driver, that is pretty much all the functionality you can do here in the 2024 Chevy Trax. Now moving over to the 11 inch infotainment system, this does have a little bit more functionality and we'll go through all the menus here. So I'm gonna go ahead and set you guys down here on the center armrest so you guys get a good steady picture and then we'll run through all the functionality here of this 11 inch screen. So moving over here to the infotainment system, this is going to be the main home screen that you'll find upon starting your tracks. Now this one does unfortunately does not have the Google integration like that of the new Chevy Colorado as well as the GMC uh, Yukon, the Chevy Tahoe and vehicles like that. So that is why there are less icons overall, but the software and the UI is very similar to those vehicles. You can see you do have Android Auto, Apple CarPlay that is available as wireless here in this vehicle, your climate icon, your setting shortcut, as well as your Wi-Fi hotspot menu. Here on the left hand side, you can see your home button, your vehicle information, your traction control controls, because that is all digital. There's no physical button to turn off traction control. You have your phone icon, as well as your audio, Bluetooth menu, and stuff like that. Now you can drag and drop or rearrange any of these icons by pressing and holding for about three seconds, and then moving it over and dropping it wherever you would like. And you can replace any of these vertical items with any of these other ones simply by dragging and dropping and moving it over and it will simply swap them. Now I first want to start out with the vehicle menu and some of the items that are maintenance items here in this menu. Uh, this will show you your engine air life. You do have your oil life as well and your TPMS current pressure inside each individual tire. Moving over to gauges, we have your battery voltage, coolant temperature, and then finally on trip, you have your trip information, both trip one, trip two, fuel economy, which you can reset any of these items from all three sub menus. And if you wanna choose one of these items, you can insert it into the digital cluster itself. So simply something that a lot of people out there might want to keep an eye on is your tire pressure. Well, if you go into that menu, select it and hit show in cluster, that will move that information over to the digital cluster itself. 
Now, unfortunately, you cannot scroll through the different items like you can in the new Colorado uh, Canyon and stuff like that. It's basically one item can be shown at any time inside of the cluster, and that will remove your tachometer, unfortunately, and will only give you a digital speed readout at the very top. Uh, but you can remove that from the cluster at any time by going back to that menu and selecting remove. Uh, but that is very handy for choosing any of these items under these three menus to be shown in the digital cluster itself. Now above that, we do have our traction control. Like I said, this is a uh, electronic on off button instead of a physical control here on the dashboard. So you can turn just traction control off, turn traction control and stability control off, or leave it on as it will default to upon most restarts of the vehicle. We have our phone menu. So this is where you'll manage your connected phones, Bluetooth, wireless, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. You can see one is not connected. Uh, so this is where you'll simply add that for the very first time. Above that, we have our audio Bluetooth menu. Uh, this is where you'll access AM, FM, and Sirius XM, as well as the uh, channel favorites. So you can see at the bottom, it appears to allow you to put more than 15 in here. So there's definitely a lot of favorites you can put at the bottom. You can see five per page, and then you scroll over, and it appears to allow you to put at least 10 in there, if not many more than that. Uh, but that is very nice to have. You can simply add a favorite by holding it down and it will add that right there. Uh, so very easy to do, and you can replace these at any time by simply holding it down for about three seconds, and it will override that. This is where you'll access the tune menu, so if you wanna to tune to a specific channel, you can access your EQ settings through the sound menu. You can uh, disable or enable the radio text, uh, manage your favorites, and do all that through the menu system itself. And then lastly, this is the browse, so you can browse by category, um, music, sports, news, or talk, uh, through the Sirius XM menus. And one nice thing about the screen is immediately you can see it does offer channel art uh, for most stations out there. So again, it depends on the song that is currently playing, but it will pull some digital channel art and display it on the screen, along with all the other information uh, about the song and the album itself, including the year it was released. Now going back to this, it has AM, FM, and uh, Sirius XM capabilities, along with USB, uh, your phone, wireless Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, and stuff like that. Now going back to the home screen, you can go to your climate and control the actual single zone automatic climate control in this vehicle on the screen itself. I'm not exactly sure why you'd wanna do this when you do have physical controls just below the screen, uh, but that is a redundant feature, which is nice. And finally going to the Wi-Fi hotspot, you can connect and control all of your Wi-Fi name, password, uh, share the hotspot with other devices in the vehicle itself, which is very nice. And GM has had for several years across pretty much all of their vehicles. Now diving into the settings menu, you'll find some redundant stuff here. You can see we immediately go into the audio settings, but if we go back, this will bring up three different tiles, system, vehicle, and apps. So starting out with the system, this is your date and time. You can set to automatically use the network provided time, which I leave it on uh, for just about every vehicle I have. You can change the language. You can control or connect new phones like I showed in the other screen. That's the same one that pops up. Wi-Fi networks, Wi-Fi hotspot, privacy, vehicle to phone sharing. Here's your display settings. Turn off the display if you're at night and want to keep it dark on the inside. There's your sounds. So you can mute the audible touch feedback. So every time you select something on the screen, you can turn that on and off. Change your units. This does have over the air software updates, which is very cool in my opinion. Uh, this will check for vehicle and head unit softwares and updates as needed from General Motors. Uh, this is released usually periodically. You can see no updates available. And you can also see the current software Android version that is running for the cluster or the radio system itself. You can see, not sure why anyone would want to view that information, but it is available uh, if you'd like. And you can also, at the very bottom, reset both the infotainment and the vehicle settings to factory defaults much like that of a smartphone. Uh, so if you buy this vehicle pre-owned or uh, selling this vehicle, you will want to reset, get all of your personal information and data off of it uh, by doing that right there. So moving over to vehicle, you can set up your teen driver, which will set a proximity key fob for the vehicle and give them limitations. Um, you can see they have, have to buckle to drive and stuff like that with the teen driver mode. You have rear seat reminder, you have climate and air quality settings. There's your collision and detected system. So this one does have adaptive cruise control as an option, lane change alert, rear cross traffic alert. You can uh, change the front pedestrian braking to alert, uh, brake and alert or off if you don't want it uh, interfering at all. 
Next, we have our comfort and convenience features. You have the chime volume as well as the automatic wipe in reverse gear for the rear window wiper. That is a handy feature um, if your uh, wipers are on, but I'm not sure I'd want to wipe every time. And then we have our lighting at the very bottom. You can change the amount of time that the exit lighting is stayed on. So between 30, 60, and 120 seconds, depending on how much time you need, uh, say, to go from your garage to your house or something like that. And that is pretty much all the stuff. You have your door lock settings, so anti-lockout, auto door unlock, delayed door lock, all these different settings you can control. Uh, very familiar to that of other GM vehicles of the past. And lastly, moving over to the app screen, we have our audio, which we already discussed. We have our phone. So you can show active call when answering a call, turn that on and off. You can sort contacts and only show call alerts in driver display so it will not pop up on the infotainment system. It instead will pop up only on the digital infotainment uh, driver display to be a little bit more private uh, depending on who you have inside of the vehicle. And then lastly under OnStar we have TTY mode. So that's pretty much gonna do it for this video and walkthrough of the infotainment system as well as the digital gauge cluster. If you guys enjoyed this video or found something helpful, make sure to hit that like button below. It greatly helps out the channel in these videos. Subscribe if you guys are not already subscribed and make sure to check out some of the walk around videos I've done on the new 2024 Chevy Trax and a few different trim levels at this point. So I've seen most of the available trim levels in this Trax and I have to say I'm extremely impressed. And chances are, if you're watching this video, you probably already purchased one or are strong considering purchasing one so if you haven't already and are considering it i think it is a very solid value for the price point that it is and the features and amenities that it offers so uh, once again hopefully you guys enjoyed let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below and as always hope to see you guys in the next one